The body of this man is so large that just one step makes the earth tremble. They didn't believe in earthquakes. But when Young Hyun walked, it seemed like the world was ending. Everyone was completely shocked. He was so heavy that his weight exceeded several hundred kilograms already. He dreamed of becoming the supreme leader of martial arts. But even a mosquito landing on his neck was enough to make him stagger and fall. The fall of his gigantic body could be heard from the other side of the country. Is he the one causing the earthquakes in my house? His body was torn and unusable, but he knew that at some point, someone would appear and destroy the entire Murim. That man was truly incredible and was able to unify the entire Murim. His parents also died in the chaos he caused. Therefore, Someone as ordinary and weak as him was accepted as a disciple by six masters of the main sex, undergoing infernal training where living was worse than death. They tried to pierce him alive, they tried to freeze him alive, they tried fire, this strengthened his body, and all of this was his master's plan for him to become very powerful, and then he was sent back in time to change the fate of the world. But he never imagined that he would end up in Hyun's fat, useless body, unable to practice martial arts. Back in the present, he was being treated by Jang Seung. While Hyun was thinking about how to defeat the ungrateful servant of the sect who would cause all the chaos, he remembered that he first needed to obtain the virgin ginseng before the ungrateful servant, the doctor, and the one responsible for Hyun's care kept arguing about his health. And he couldn't think straight until he finally remembered that the servant would get the virgin ginseng in six months. He needed to do something right now. He immediately got up, telling his father that he needed to walk. His father immediately called people to bring a big chair, the biggest available. The people carrying the chair needed to be the strongest, but he refused because he wanted to walk alone. Still, his father immediately called the guards to help him, showing a scene that made the old man's eyes moist. He hadn't walked alone since he was 10 years old. In the following days, he trained very hard, walking around the courtyards for a month, but this ton-heavy body still showed no sign of change. He even got on the scale to check, but not even a whole herd of pigs climbing made Hyun budge a bit. The rope on the pig's side even broke. While Hyun tried to remember the name of the servant who would bring chaos, his vassal was trying to console him, saying that losing weight wasn't something that could be done overnight. It was necessary to focus on the diet, reducing sugar intake and increasing protein, and then do exercises to strengthen the muscles. The situation of the young master could take a long time to stabilize, but Hyun didn't care. He just wanted to remember the name of that ungrateful servant. It seems that Hyun lost his memories about the servant when he reincarnated, but anyway, he will appear in Anhui province to look for the virgin ginseng. Maybe he could find him during this opportunity. Thinking about the scene where he would press him there with his invincible strength, he was laughing completely satisfied, imagining that after dealing with him, he would have a quiet life. What a dream! <laughs> His vassal thinks he must have gone mad as a side effect of losing weight too fast. He was shocked by the sudden change and ran off to call the doctor. He immediately brought the old Jang running to him. Jang Seung, who at 30 entered the selection exam to be the emperor's personal physician. He went through a series of excellent tests to become a doctor at the same time. At 50, he attained enlightenment and developed his own medical technique. This was his savior and the key to making him beautiful with an athletic body. He asked if he could prepare various types of weight loss remedies quickly. The very happy man says that this would indeed be possible. So Hyun asks if it can be done in six months, but it would take three years for that and he would have to exercise. Hyun killed a mosquito on his doctor's neck while calling him a charlatan. However, the doctor thought of a method to help him lose weight quickly. If he couldn't walk on land, he should walk underwater. Eventually, he arrived at a nearby stream. The men, after carrying him all the way, were dead tired. Hyun slowly bent down to enter the water. He thought that walking underwater would relax his body. The pressure on his bones and muscles would be relieved. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the deep water. It seemed like he would float thanks to his big balloon belly. But suddenly he sank like a submarine, and his vassal still hadn't reacted, thinking he was happily swimming. But little did his vassal know that he was now an oxygenless submarine. The vassal thought he had the potential to become a professional swimmer, until another vassal warned that this river might have a steeper decline than expected, and he might be sinking like a submarine. The vassal looked at the water without understanding, but now he realized that his master was drowning. He panicked and ran to save him, but basically, an ordinary person like them couldn't carry Hyun's giant body to the shore. Meanwhile, young Hyun began to lose his strength. Memories of this body at two years old clearly surfaced in his head. He had to go through terrible things. His mother died protecting him. At that moment, 
A girl pulled him to the shore, saving his life. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so they finally returned to their home. The vassal at that moment was facing Hien's father's wrath. But after finding out that everything was caused by the doctor, the man, after almost going to the afterlife at the hands of Hyun's father, explains that the young man was sad after being rejected and decided to lose weight. Then he mentioned the underwater weight loss method, which was very effective. But Hyun's sister, the woman who sent her maid to save him at the waterfall, says that it was not necessary to go so deep into the waterfall to lose weight. Now in Hyun's room, he woke up again, seeing his beautiful older sister. He could not even believe that that beautiful maiden was his sister. Clearly, he was fat and stupid, but he had such a beautiful sister, an exceptional beauty. His sister's maid asked if she could help him up. Hyun thinks it would be impossible for her to do it alone, but she easily lifted him up, saying it's a piece of cake for her. The next day, he was taken to the location where the weight loss program was, but the subordinates were very happy. Clearly it was strange for everyone to be happy to carry someone with the weight of a mammoth. Arriving at the site, Everyone was building a five-star kiddie pool for him. This was clearly the idea of the older sister. He no longer needed to go to the dangerous stream. But Hyun finds this very strange. But upon seeing his pool completely ready, Hyun becomes very happy. The people who saw him walking to the pool also seemed happy and congratulated him for it. They clearly had sweated a lot just because of such a meaningless thing. So how could this be fun? He also asked his vassal who was arriving now about his adoptive father, the head of the family. The impressive thing is that in the vassal's view, the old bodybuilder looks charming to his eyes. So the man says that the patriarch is the great apprentice whom all apprentices admire. This made him a symbol of purity and integrity. But in Hyun's view, his father was just an old lecher. The vassal says that whenever there was hunger, he opened his warehouse and took care of everyone's livelihood by sharing food and clothes. Everyone in the town respected him. Hyun immediately realized that he himself had been a nuisance since he was young. But he realized that even if he did nothing, being the patriarch's son would still provide food and a beautiful life ahead. He laughed loudly at this, leaving people perplexed. The next day, the pool was ready. Hyun jumped into the water, causing gigantic waves that spread throughout the world. He also asked his guard to prepare a large stone ball to tie to his leg and start practicing. The man did as he asked, so after tying it to Hyun's leg, he threw the stone ball with all his strength, causing Hyun to be thrown into the air. Wasn't this pool supposed to be as shallow as a child's pool? Hyun looked like the Titanic sinking to the bottom of the lake. He wanted to practice internal energy, which would be more convenient for the water masters. To guard against this, his masters developed a method of internal energy training called the Spiritual Energy Heart Cultivation Technique. Instead of channeling energy into the core, it would focus on the heart, not using energy veins, but blood vessels to transport energy according to practice. He finally succeeded in replacing internal energy. Internal energy training began to flow through the lake. He could feel the flow of water and control it to his advantage. Then he used the most powerful move of the Shaolin strongest fist technique, the mystical fist of the 100 feet, which hit the water's surface causing a terrible disturbance. After that, he continued frenetically underwater training with his previous knowledge advancing rapidly. He could already master the technique in just one month. It was time to return. The first thing to do was to check how much weight he had lost, and he asked his vassal to prepare the scale. If even weight loss didn't work, how would he face his master this time? After much suspense, Hyun's gigantic weight had decreased a bit. This time the rope didn't even break like last time. He laughed wildly and with great happiness. His vassal admitted that he had doubted him a little at first. Now Hyun needed to get stronger quickly to be able to stop the chaos servant. So he ate everything in sight, then cultivated before the food was completely digested. He repeated this several times. Then two months passed. He was now at the bottom of the pool. Then he used the palm technique, causing the water on the surface to completely churn. The vassal couldn't believe what he saw. So he said, how was that arrogant pig able to do that? At this moment someone came up behind him asking who he was calling a pig? This was the patriarch completely furious. He wanted to kill Hyun's vassal right then and there. But the patriarch's personal bodyguard ordered the soldiers to take Hyun's vassal away immediately. He didn't do this to arrest him. He wanted him to rest after all the effort he had made for the young master. The man cried with happiness. His father was very happy that his son had just sent water flying through the air using a palm martial art. His son had the support 
supreme power of martial technique. Although he wanted Hyun to follow the academic path, he would still support him in his martial practice. Then his face became serious again. He ordered paper and ink to send a message to the palace. The next day his father gave him the divine manual of heaven, and Hyun had a serious face. Because this was the manual that the emperor had granted. Clearly, his father was influential enough to get something like this. His father just said that he had recently mentioned to the emperor that his son had started practicing martial arts. So the emperor personally chose the best martial arts manual from the palace for him. Ha ha ha. Little did Hyun know what his father was capable of to get this. The old man sent letters every day to the emperor asking if the man had forgotten about him. He did all this just to win the emperor's heart by blackmailing. This seemed like a lover's tantrum, didn't it? On top of all this, his brother-in-law became his instructor and would personally teach him martial arts. His name was Dam Chunwoo, his older sister's husband. He even boasted that his martial arts school was the most famous in this province. Probably, this guy must be an apprentice compared to Hyun's true strength, but he couldn't show his true strength now. So he had to kneel and accept his brother-in-law as his master. His father was so moved, his eyes looked like a waterfall. How did his son become so polite as to spend so much time kneeling? But that was simply because he couldn't get up and needed his brother-in-law's help. In the following days, he followed his brother-in-law's training but all this seemed like torture. The man would insult him and even called him a killer whale. Haya became furious and even dared to challenge his master, saying that he would prove that he already knows the basic principles of the technique. He thought it was just a joke, and he started laughing, laughing very loudly. But when Hyun ridiculed him asking if he was scared, he immediately agreed to the duel, and then sealed his internal energy to balance the battle. He still felt it wasn't enough so he tied his own arms before the fight. Hyun activated his combat technique. This seemed strong and fast enough, but still slow due to the fat body. His brother-in-law was also surprised. How could he combine combined fighting techniques so naturally? Hyun's power had limits, so he had to win quickly. He easily knocked down his brother-in-law, who was now begging for mercy, but still got knocked out. Sometime later, he was so hurt that he couldn't even scratch himself. When he asked his wife and Hyun's sister to scratch his head for him, she was happy because Hyun was doing so well. She always thought Hyun was a martial genius. His sister couldn't contain her happiness. On another day, Hyun was just walking down the street. He had never seen people so happy before. There were merchants and also children playing everywhere. So he remembered the past where dead bodies were scattered everywhere. Everyone had to live with hunger and fear. The chaos servant destroyed everything he passed by and took away everyone's peace. But now when they saw Hyun, they ran to him full of admiration. Could the young master really be walking on his own legs? Everyone was completely amazed and soon gave him many gifts, even delicious food. He was just walking but the citizens made him heavier and heavier. Their kindness was so great that he couldn't find a way to refuse. But he was more determined than ever to save this martial world. These good people here didn't deserve to die like this. At that moment, he realized that a martial arts master was watching him. The hidden martial master noticed that the fat man was looking back at him, but soon thought he was exaggerating how could a fat man who did nothing notice him. But Hyun suddenly appeared behind the man wanting to talk. With the sudden scare, the man attacked with all his strength. Hyun flying off despite weighing tons, the man's strength was uncommon. Hyun fell unconscious from the impact force. Meanwhile the man took advantage to flee. When he woke up, Hyun was furious wanting to kill the man who hit him. The people around wanted to know if he was hurt, but he pretended not to care, only it was obvious that it hurt a lot. With this, he was even more determined to train to become more powerful. Meanwhile, his father and sister were discussing together. He wanted to propose a marriage so that Hyun would become a famous general, but it was too early. His son's change was certainly related to breaking off the engagement with Nam Gung's daughter, a girl who didn't want to marry since childhood, and wanted to forge her own path in martial arts. Hyun's father wanted to ask for the girl's hand again as soon as possible. The men from Nam Gung were already nearby. They were still thinking of a fair way to refuse Young Hyun. Meanwhile, Hyun was heading to the martial beggar's area to gather information about the virgin ginseng. But he searched for a long time and found nothing. A man explains that it's been over 20 years since the beggars disappeared from the area after the patriarch built houses for them. He also wanted to gather information about the state treasure. Who would know where the beggar would be living now? At the same time, 
Namgun's lord was in the provincial government area to investigate the records of Hyun on which a marriage proposal was made. The beggar says that Hyun is a special adoptive son, so he couldn't do business until he receives permission from the central beggar office. That's because the office classified Hyun as celestial level because he's the patriarch's son. Since the opponent was someone wealthy and powerful, Namgun immediately threw a stack of coins saying he would pay any price. But it still wasn't enough. That's because they can't override the beggar matrix order. Then he withdrew his ring which was the emperor's seal. Whoever possessed this treasure would receive protection from the Namgung family. This was a treasure of inestimable value. At the same time, Hyun also arrived at the beggar's area. But this gang was too fancy to be called beggars. One of the guards outside even called him fat, telling him to leave because there was an important person here. But he didn't care and tried to enter directly since he was the patriarch's son. But he was hit by the guard in the face. And he was insulted. Hyun was really angry and ready to repay the humiliation the guard made him go through, but he'll repay in a punch this time. After Namgun gave his ring to the beggar, the beggar finally passed the information to the man about Yun Hyun. He was about to read it until suddenly a commotion started outside. Hyun was fighting against that guard. He had to admit that he underestimated the fat man. How could he move so fast even weighing hundreds of kilos? Hyun says he was using an infinite sky sword, but with his lower level ability, he couldn't do anything. Hyun just needed an apology, and he would forgive him, but the guy got even more irritated after Hyun insulted the Namgun clan. When Namgun's guard drew his sword to threaten him, Hyun defeated him instantly. All he heard was the guard's cry of pain from Namgun. Even so, Hyun raised the man again, saying he would educate him properly, began slapping the guard's face until someone shouted from the sky to stop him. This person quickly landed among them. Hyun backed away, but the man didn't intend to let him escape. Hyun immediately realized that the man was a practitioner of a brutal martial art, so he had to stop him first. With the fat body, he couldn't directly confront the brutal style. The brutal style was a martial art that increased energy burst using rotation. Hyun wanted to use the opposite rotation to reverse it, but he realized that the one in front of him now was his master and lost focus. This man was the sword master who taught him in his past life. Therefore, Hyun was familiar with these movements, but the end result was still being beaten. He thought the fat man wasn't someone so common, as he managed to disperse the power of the explosive lightning mystic fist. Hyun was trying to get up. His eyes Eyes gleaming with killing intent, the man noticed this and started to move towards him. But the subordinates approached to protect him, and he ended up unconscious. This was ridiculous. The chief of the beggar's division coming out of the building finally realized that the fat man in front of him was the patriarch's adoptive son, so he rushed to help shouting, who dares to harm the chief's son like this? People immediately looked at young Namgung with hatred, who seemed powerless. Oh, he looked at his father. At that moment, he understood everything and tore up Hyun's information book. It was now useless, and he would have to face his father's wrath. If Nam Gun wasn't Hyun's future son-in-law, he would have been punished. The chief of the beggar gang division also knelt down to apologize, and things were escalating catastrophically. Then the beggar also conveyed to Nam Gun that he should kneel and apologize, as the man in front of him was respected even by an emperor. Seeing this, Namgung immediately feared and knelt to beg for mercy. But the father's anger was about to explode. Who dared to harm his favorite son, he would surely pay with his life. At that moment, Hyun walked out the door, but his appearance was a bit strange. It seems his sister forced him to do this hairstyle to look more handsome. The chief of the beggar's division saw Hyun walking completely fine even after a punch from Namgung's son. Hyun went directly to meet the Namgung family head greeting him, also telling Namgung's son that he himself was his uncle. Although he was only 17 years old, Hyun had been waiting for this day for a long time. That's because this guy was his master in his past life and slapped him several times. Although it hurt a lot, there was nothing Hyun could do at that time. He knew that in the future this man would become the Sword King, one of the six saints of the main sect. Now Hyun finally had the chance to get revenge by pinching his cheek and making the guy call him uncle. But of course, he was very happy to see this person. He was so happy that he started crying thinking he could now take revenge. Why you bullying me? After that, everyone sat down to discuss, while Namgung still didn't know how to refuse the marriage contract. It was then that Hyun calmly refused this marriage, saying that he was busy training to save the world. The timing was not right for marriage. He even complained about the marriage contract being imposed by the previous promise without the consent of both parties. He knew that the time for marriage had not yet come. However, upon hearing this, the father was shocked. The martial arts world was full of bandits, thieves on the corners, mercenaries committing crimes, and he was clearly referring to Namgun and the beggar. 
They had to relent and remain silent. No one disagreed. So he got up and started to leave, saying that they considered the matter of marriage closed since both agreed. At that moment, he called the chief of the beggar gang, saying they would have to have a little chat. He wanted to get information about the virgin ginseng, know about the current state of martial arts, and the ancient masters of his lineage. He wanted revenge for what they did. He would make them go through everything he went through in his past life, and it would surely come at a price. His eyes became malicious when he realized it was time to accept a disciple. Then we returned to the pool. His vassal was asking him to return and rest in his room. But Hyun didn't seem to care much, until his beautiful sister along with her vassal arrived at the scene telling him to rest. Hyun's guard, seeing the wooden woman with the sister, became completely infatuated. The woman looks like a two-legged tractor. His sister, knowing that he intends to go to the Mirim, asks if he forgot what happened to their mother. He knows she died because she had unfinished business in the Mirim. Hyun just asks if she thinks he appears to be someone untrustworthy and weak like that. This caught her off guard. He asserted that nothing bad would happen again to their clan because he wouldn't allow it. His sister was very happy about this, saying he's no longer a child. With a wide smile on her face she caressed our young fat master, saying he has grown quite a bit. Grown quite a bit sideways perhaps. Why was his lovely sister being so friendly with him. This was all very strange. Or was this what family should mean? After that, quite some time passed, the pool water stirred. As someone jumped from inside to outside, this person said that the time had finally come. The vassal rushed, asking his master to be careful. Will we finally see Hyun's transformation? <laughs> Our protagonist turned into the flabby man. Look at this dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Winter arrived and we returned to his father's palace where the old man said he shouldn't go out there as he's too thin and might end up catching a gust of wind and flying away. But he would go anyway. This is because he needs to train Namgong's son. So he gets up saying he will visit his uncle in Anhui province and leaves. At this moment he was in his room packing his clothes, he was happy to finally have freedom and wished to leave without anyone recognizing him. But little did he know, a large carriage was being prepared with over 20 guards. Outside it seemed like they were all gathered to leave, but all these people would be a nuisance for him. So he ended up having an idea, he called everyone to drink with him inside, saying they will only leave tomorrow. His sister was thinking of bidding farewell to her brother until suddenly she heard her brother's voice and several other drunks. She decided to wait for him outside. At this moment, the guard was poisoned by Ken. Not with alcohol, but with a temporary substance that dispersed his internal energy. He probably won't be able to move until the next morning. This was a paralyzing poison that his doctor gave him as a protective measure. He was about to leave when his sister approached. She hugged him and asked him to take care of himself, not to take risks. If he felt too tired or afraid, he could come back any time. She and her father would always be there waiting for him. So he took the best horse given by the emperor in the stables and set off on his journey. The next day he arrived at a small village, but people still thought he was a criminal, at least a chicken thief. He had to disguise himself as an officer sent by the Yu clan, saying he came here to look for something for his master's son. So he asked if they had noticed a stone emitting red light on this mountain, but they were confused. An old man told him that he had seen it several times while walking on the mountain at sunset. He said it looked like a red light reflected by the setting sun, shining like a red beam. Quickly he asked the man where this place was, the location inside the mountain was called Pagoda Mountain, and he advised him not to go there. It was the territory of the Nine Dragons clan, and they were not ordinary bandits, they were extremely cruel. This only made Hun certain that this was the right place, so he asked the old man to guide him to the Nine Dragons clan. At first the old man was afraid, but upon seeing Hun's pleading and almost crying look he agreed. Thus, the two set off into the forest. In the end they arrived there, but he couldn't put the life of the man who helped him in danger. So he asked for directions. The man pointed to the location. He also assured that the man would be well rewarded. At sunset the red light shone. It was the virgin ginseng. He moved with all speed, crossing the stream. He thought about fighting underwater in case he was discovered. In this case he had an advantage. Finally he reached the nine dragon stronghold, but he didn't want to use force. So he began to spread his spiritual energy in search of the virgin ginseng. But instead of the item, he found a bandit beating a woman, and when the child started crying, the man began to go after her. For a moment Hyun hesitated to save them, but soon he decided to intervene. In a split second, the man was already lifeless on the ground. Hyun hadn't intended to get involved, but upon seeing the little child with her mother, he decided he would help them until the end. After that, more guards started emerging from a nearby hut. Evidently our protagonist of the loose skin put them all to sleep, 
After tossing them into a nearby cabin, he noticed there were several other citizens inside. At this point, he saw no other option but to help them too, but the people, being nervous, didn't seem very rational, so he decided to turn the child's mother into the leader who would guide the people. At this moment, a plan had already been orchestrated. When one of the guards entered the cabin to look for his men, he noticed that his men were on the floor sleeping soundly, quickly deducing that it was those people who did this. When he thought to say something, it was already too late. The fat-skinned man hit his neck. Thus, the man went to sleep with his comrades. It was time to proceed with the plan. The objective was the main guard post. The fat man crossed the area in the blink of an eye. Quickly, he was under the guard post. In one hand, he held a torch. In the other hand, he was carrying a punch. Imbuing much mana in his attack, he struck with all this force against the guard post, where he literally knocked down the guard post with the man who was on guard. This this guy didn't expect ha ha ha. People were incredulous seeing this from afar, but soon they remembered that this would be the signal to proceed with the plan. Everyone should immediately evacuate and flee. It was also possible to see someone passing at an absurd speed. This was the dead skin man with a torch in hand. He came here to set fire to one of the cabins. His intention was to turn this place into hell now. In another nearby cabin, there were several bandits sleeping inside. Suddenly they woke up to a bright light. That was because several cabins were now on fire. The protagonist appeared at the door of their cabin, self-proclaiming himself as the arsonist, the skinny man with loose skin. He burned that cabin, also burned several others while running around trying to avoid many conflicts. Soon a group of bandits found him. His best option at this point was to run, but soon he was surrounded by another man. He easily dodged the attack and quickly knocked out the man. The loose-skinned man was unstoppable, like a lightning bolt falling from the sky. He crossed that village that night. There were two guards at the gate, who were soon attracted by a small thrown stone. When he bent down to pick it up, he noticed a bright flash behind him. Only then did the foolish guard realize that the place he was supposed to be guarding was now on fire, so they ran out desperately to try to help. At this moment, everyone lurking at the gate took the opportunity to flee. The girl's mother could only hope that the warrior and her savior would emerge alive from this confusion, so she ran with all her might towards freedom. Our loose-skinned lord was running with all his might through the village in an attempt to draw attention to himself, but soon his strength began to wane. It was only at this moment that he realized someone was by his side ready to strike. The man was fast enough to not give him a chance to dodge, hitting the loose-skinned man squarely making him fly several meters. The rock asks who the intruder is, but as the loose-skinned lord didn't respond to his question, soon he was surrounded by various enemies who even began to ask if he wears bandages because he's ugly. Guards began arriving from all sides and the last blow he received caused him a lot of damage. The rock orders his vassals to go put out the fire while he tries to recruit the loose-skinned lord to his side. Gun sits down to gain time to recover his spiritual energy. At this moment, he sits down to catch his breath. Recruiting talents to work as bandits is harder than it seems. He thinks about it, but those who have strength and agility are very necessary. The leader of the bandits soon starts to wonder about the loose-skinned lord's behavior. Is he meditating excessively without caring about them? In a short time, he finally recovers. The spiritual energy becomes frightening and then he asks, why would a wolf serve a mere puppy? The leader at that moment immediately orders his subordinates to advance to deal with him, as if they wanted to crush him to death. In just one blow his mask falls off and the men see that he is actually ugly because he's full of loose skin. The battle continues, Hyun is very fast, and although they are not strong, they cooperate harmoniously. Working together, they finally manage to reach the loose skin lord, hitting him and making him fall to the ground. Even a lone lion would fall before a large group of battle-hardened hyenas. Now realizing he has no options left, he decides to change his fighting style, he starts to become lighter and clumsier, then he activates the immortal step of the eight drunks to easily pass through the guards. Even the leader is surprised by the way he moves. He changes shape again, using the shadowless flight technique. He moves as fast as lightning towards the leader. They exchange blows in a fraction of seconds, but Hyun knew it was superficial. The leader wouldn't die just from that. Now that his powers were exhausted, he could only fall directly off the cliff to escape. As he falls and thinks he's still no match for all of them, Hyun thinks he will come back to cut off all their heads. Then he disappears off the cliff, showing his middle finger. <laughs> Look at this dude. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this leaves the rock with an angry eye patch. He orders them to retrieve the loose skin Lord's body from below the cliff. But soon one of his men arrives to give him a warning. 
it seems the people they were holding hostage have disappeared. This makes the bald man furious wanting even more to eliminate the loose skin lord. At this moment falling off the cliff, Hien takes advantage of already being in hell to dive headfirst. His aim is to land as lightly as possible, he needs to land softly in the water. So he finally dives seeming like a screw. His fear is that he will hit the ground with the speed of the dive generated by the height of the fall. He finally manages to stop, but soon he started to be pulled downwards, and this time it wasn't because of his weight. Yet again he sank like the Titanic. After being pulled for a long time by the current, he ended up coming out in a cave on the other side. At this moment he just wanted to rest due to the gigantic exhaustion from the battle, when suddenly the energy of his heart began to react to something. His heart was ordering him to move forward to find it soon. He would find the virgin ginseng. After a while swimming through the cave, the loose-skinned man was startled by what he saw. What was in front of him was the virgin ginseng, a beautiful plant emanating aura. Hyun was so happy that he started to cry. At the same time, he remembered the beggar's words saying it would be easy to find the ginseng. Probably when he returns he'll set fire to the beggar. Without wasting any more time, he goes to the ginseng, and he pulls it out of the ground with his hands. This was truly the legendary item called virgin ginseng, and it was now in his hands. He even looks around to see if this isn't a prank. Not even the servant of chaos could be faster than him to grab this item. As a still weighing 1,000 pounds, he devoured the ginseng with much happiness. Suddenly his spiritual energy started to rise, feeling so much pleasure he couldn't stop eating that piece of plant. Sitting down to cultivate, the loose-skinned man was very happy. Now he would overcome everything and, and everyone. Returning to the village, Hyun's vassal was searching for information about his master who had passed by there, but since the loose-skinned man had falsified his name, the vassal couldn't find him. But he wasn't here because he wanted to, going back in time to the Patriarch's mansion while he was sleeping, to his misfortune. At this moment someone entered through the door shouting, this person was the father of the former angry fat man. Realizing the vassal was sleeping, he starts hitting him saying he'll make him sleep forever now. I, I understood that reference. This is the reason the vassal is here in the village looking for Hyun. Some time later he finds the fat man's horse, and starts questioning the boy where the owner of this horse is while crying desperately. After learning that he went to Pagoda Mountain where many bandits live, he starts crying even more. Imagining that his master is being beaten by criminals, he runs desperately. Now in the middle of the frozen forest it was raining heavily. The survivors of that village were running while searching for the nearest village. Someone was hidden behind a tree. This person was the guide who brought Hinan to this place and now was pointing the way to the village for them. The woman thanks the man's kindness. The old man asks if she saw a young man covered in bandages around. Of course, the man was talking about her savior, and she knew he had sacrificed himself staying behind with several mountain bandits. Now near a waterfall, the guards were furious because they couldn't find the loose skin man. When suddenly one of the bandits points to the waterfall, there was a man coming out of it saying he almost drowned to death. People didn't understand how this guy came out of the middle of the waterfall. The man, on the other hand, says they saved him time, since he was going to look for the bandits anyway. But the bandits had no idea who this man in front of them was now. Elegantly removing the hair from his eyes, he asks if the bandits weren't looking for him. But the men have no idea who he is, because Han's appearance has completely changed. I don't even know if I can continue calling him the loose skin man. Hyun at this moment orders them to take off their clothes and hand them over, as he is cold. As the bandits don't want to do that, he immediately kicks one of them in the head with great force, a force that knocks out his opponent with a single kick without even using mana. Everyone was impressed and trembling with fear, but Hinan was complaining that now his new clothes were very dirty, so he will need more clothes. He says this while looking at the guys shivering knowing they will soon be without clothes. Oh, you so know, so know. Finally, we have a decent and handsome protagonist. Next, they were all in their underwear and shivering. Hyun was feeling the weight of his new weapon. Suddenly, with a cold look on his face, he decided to test it. The men shivering didn't even realize what was about to happen. Then a head was removed from its body with great ease. Laughing at the situation, Hyun asks if they will just stand there waiting for their end. The men start begging for mercy, but Hyun just says he doesn't want to. He had promised to cut off everyone's heads. They all ran in terror, but now it was too late. They were all headless for this situation. Finally, the hunt had begun. Everyone under the mountain was subdued that day. No one escaped from Hyun's clutches. He even noticed that his new clothes were dirty again. So he decided to go to the riverbank to clean himself up, but was astonished to look at the reflection in the river. The loose skinned man was now the male Barbie. At that moment he realized that it was thanks to the ginseng virgin. For this reason the bandits didn't recognize him. He was happy and embarrassed to have such a beautiful face. 
With this face he doesn't even seem adopted, as he is as beautiful as his sister. But he is soon startled by screams, the noise came from the top of the mountain. At that spot the old guide was being tortured by the bandits. All the survivors were captured again during a process. The guide didn't intend to give information about the loose skin man and was about to be whipped again. However, the man's attention was drawn to one of the other bandits. They were wondering why there was a man standing in the snow staring at them. At that moment, Hyun made a strange gesture while crouching in the snow. The bandits start to wonder if the man is scooping snow with his hand. Maybe he wants to play, but his throwing strength is like a bomb. He quickly knocks out several bandits just with snowballs. Anyone who dares to oppose him, he deals with them with lightning speed. The bandits could barely see him climbing up there, then he came down exploding everything. Those who didn't fall in this attack were soon decimated by the Moon Destroyer blow. Only one survived all this chaos. Hyun was asking if the man was afraid of him, but people couldn't even recognize him now. The old guy began to cough and groan due to the pain. Remembering the man's kindness and guiding him through the mountain, he became furious asking if they did this. The young man started lying saying it wasn't him, but with just a spear movement, the man had already been split in two. The survivors were begging for mercy from Hyun, but he wasn't there to hurt them, but to help the man who had shown him great kindness. The guide soon realized who was in front of him. Hyun tells the man to go back to the village. Realizing the man couldn't even speak, he began to infuse spiritual energy into his body and slowly burned to cauterize the wounds. It's not the best treatment, but it's what he could do at this moment. Hyun asks if anyone can carry the guide, then orders them to go towards the village without looking back and so they do. At this moment, Hyun swears by the heavens that he will bring divine wrath upon the mountain bandits. The guards at the gate of the bandit village were wondering why it was lightning on a sunny day in the middle of winter. Suddenly one of them was decapitated at a speed at which he didn't even realize he had died. The other was killed in the same blow. Hyun fills his lungs with air and shouts loudly for the bald man to come out of wherever he is and come to battle. He will have no mercy on any of these beasts. His intention is to cut and destroy anything that stands in his way. He slices the bandits as if cutting a loaf of bread to spread butter. Today Hyun will eliminate this entire clan from the earth. He quickly cuts down several bandits at once, and with great ease anyone who sees this scene could do nothing but tremble in fear, because soon their turn would also come. Suddenly Hyun was almost hit by an arrow, the bald man's gang had arrived. But this is what our protagonist was waiting for. At this moment he has to be more skillful than before. It's the right time. The familiar voice of the wild butler is heard. He brought men here to destroy the dragon clan's camp. The guards attack the bandits. The vassal's movements are not bad either. After all, he is a fighter. The bald leader calls his subordinates to fight. They are not afraid to fight, but the bald man decides to flee. How can he let this worm escape so easily? Incredulous that his pursuer is so persistent, he doesn't even recognize Hen's new look after plastic surgery. But when he sees the middle finger raise, the bald man remembers everything and becomes even more terrified. Now he is completely terrified. How is it possible that, in one night, he becomes so strong? He now sees Hen's immense power. He is truly a martial arts master. The only option is to kneel and beg for mercy. If Hen wants any woman, food, or even gold, the bald man says he can provide. But when others ask for mercy, is it given to them? Hyun is punishing him today on behalf of the heavens, so he did what he came here to do. At this moment the vassal appears, asking if he is okay, but he does not recognize the person in front of him as his young master. So he asked about Hyun, his young master, saying that his family is really a bunch of idiots and that the young master is as insolent as his father. He also talks about the young master's ugly appearance and his personality. He even says that not long ago he ate like an ox. Hyun at this moment was thinking of killing his vassal. After finding out that he is the young master, he completely changes his mind. <coughs> saying that during the time they haven't seen each other the young master has become very handsome. Then he says they need to go back or the patriarch will end up killing him. But Hyun hasn't finished dealing with the chaos master. So the vassal retrieves a divine whip he used when he was an inspector. Of course, Hyun doesn't intend to cooperate, so he tries to run, but is tied up by the butler. He is dragged back, on the way tries to strike the vassal who defends himself. This power of the young master surprises everyone. In just a few months, the young master has become so strong that he is having advantages against a former inspector. Hitting his defense, he makes the man be dragged back a few meters, but he is soon surprised by an attack from behind. The vassals cannot disobey the patriarch's order. The battle was about to reach its climax, Everyone was taking it very seriously. At this moment, the old guide arrives. 
He thanks Hyun for saving their lives and informs that the prisoners escaped safely. They are very grateful to him this time. He saved many people. While Hyun was distracted saying goodbye to the old guide, the vassal ties him up without him noticing and takes him away while he screams wildly. Then he is knocked out by the vassal to be carried more easily. The vassal also asks not to spread about the young master's deeds around, they should take advantage that he used a false name because a nail that stands out gets hammered, and that will attract evil people to Kian. Some time later we are shown the inside of the cave, the ginseng virgin is no longer there, the chaos servant was at the location looking for the item. He was so furious that the ginseng was stolen, that he almost unintentionally killed all his vassals. So he ordered them to bring the thief to him as soon as possible, and to kill all his relatives. He lost the item and now he's mad. Finders keepers, losers weepers. When Hyun finally woke up, he realized that he missed the chance to find the chaos servant in the ginseng cave. But when the second creature called the millennium snail appears, another opportunity will arise. Now they arrive at the city of Hefei. This was a gigantic and very charming city. Trade was very different from his hometown. There were also attractions for tourists. When Hyun got off the carriage, he realized that he was now in front of the emperor's gate. When he tried to pass, he was stopped by the guards, but then someone ordered them to lower their weapons. This was ordered by his father who was waiting for them there. Noticing his father's concern, he decided to reciprocate the affection the old man gives him so much. But he is ignored, as he was not recognized. His father begins to beat the vassal, saying that he dared to lie in the letter. He says this because Hyun was supposed to be with the vassal, until the man being beaten says that the guy next to him is his dear son. He even takes a look at him, but goes back to beating the vassal asking how can that handsome guy there be his son. Hyun then calls the old man father, the man recognizes the voice and asks if he is really his dear son. He still can't believe what he sees. The news quickly reached Namgong Castle. The squadron captain reports that it was told to the public that the old man's vassal who solved the problems. But in fact, it was Han himself alone who exterminated the entire clan. This leaves old Namgong impressed and interested. But still he asks if the captain's eyes were not deceiving him. The captain also says that to bring Han back, everyone had to work together to contain the boy's forces. Soon the patriarch of the family intervenes saying that his son is very skeptical. Hyun is the future heir of a gigantic clan and was also born with martial arts, besides having lost weight and become a handsome young man in the process. To summarize what his son is doing now, it is to ignore the facts and believe in the rumors of the world. That's why he's skeptical. So the patriarch says that he will personally take care of marriage matters from now on. At this moment we are already in a meeting between the patriarchs. Of course Hyun is in the middle since he is the target of negotiations. Hyun's father says that he must take the martial arts exams, but Patriarch Namgong intervenes saying that this type of training, regardless of how talented he is, will only be able to become a general. Hyun's father asks what he proposes then. The old man says that if he trains martial arts with a good master, he will surpass a general and even become a leader who saves the country and makes history. Hearing the phrase, save the country, makes Hyun more excited. The amazed boy's father asks if there really is such a good master out there. Nangong says that they won't even need to look for one. He himself intends to teach the boy, a retired patriarch of the Namgong clan, the king's sword named Namgong Changshan. Our flabby man has already realized that the old man wants him on the team because of his current accomplishments. Of course, our protagonist knows that this clan is completely materialistic, but they are highly renowned and have been around for a long time. The flabby man understands that this is a golden opportunity for him to grow within the clan and to get away from the Yu clan for a while. That is of course if his father's old man allows it. In the next moment, his father was already whimpering upon hearing that he wanted to become Namgong's disciple. But clearly, the old man from the Namgong clan had gotten into Ken's father's mind. Then the situation quickly calmed down. The old man said he was glad to hear from Namgong himself that he would take care of his son now that he had to go to the emperor. Confused, Namgong asks what the emperor is thinking. Probably the emperor is considering choosing the next emperor in his place, and so he wants his grandfather by his side. Namgong quickly starts flattering the old man, saying that this proves how reliable he is, which leaves the old man completely delighted and foolish with such words. But Hinan, on the other hand, was already completely bored with this conversation of old men. Now they were at the emperor's gate for the farewell. The old man in tears tells him to obey his uncle and do his best in training. He also came with that overprotective father talk, saying to eat all meals, write twice a week, blah blah blah. Finally, they began to depart. Our flabby man starts to feel relieved that the embarrassment will finally end. But soon his expression changes, obviously. Before leaving, his father and his vassal make one last humiliating gesture of waving goodbye to him in an unpleasant atmosphere. Certainly our protagonist was completely embarrassed by this. 
but it was clear that he was also happy with all this affection. Suddenly, his uncle calls him, and he turns quickly. The patriarch of the Namgong family simply orders him to follow. The old chubby man thinks that the man will really start with the training now, so they walk through the city. They greeted several citizens. Hyun noticed that the patriarch was very popular among his people. Everyone quickly greeted him as they saw him, showing a lot of respect. But what impressed our former chubby boy the most were the gigantic buildings of the Namgong clan city. The guards were all stationed, but as soon as they saw their leader, they made way immediately. Namgong's order was that they would go up. Several elegant buildings were seen along the way. At this moment, they were heading towards the top of the castle wall. Hyun was enchanted by the whole view. Then the man simply started floating. According to our protagonist, the Sword King is using aerial steps, something even his master was not able to use. After a while, the old man lands on top of the wooden structure, and turning around, he orders Hyun to climb up there too. Hyun knows how to use the beggar sex King Gong, which would allow him to climb up there equally, but he quickly guesses that the Sword King wouldn't like that. Probably he would get furious, asking if he's associating with the bastards from the beggar sect or something like that. So in this case, he'll use something else. Hyun gives a big leap towards the patriarch. That way, he quickly landed in front of him. The patriarch, in turn, praised him, saying that the boy's movements are very fast, which makes Hyun feel honored. Suddenly, the old man asks if he noticed the streets as they came here. He also asks how many places Hyun thinks he visited on this journey. At that moment, the boy trembled, realizing that his uncle was probably testing him as they came here. But the man himself says it was 64 places while the boy apologizes for being distracted. Instead of scolding him, the man says that all these places belong to the Namgong clan. Not quite understanding, the boy asks if he heard correctly. Then the old man points to the pavilion at the mountain's entrance and asks if he sees that place, and the boy says yes. Pointing again, he says that from the pavilion to the other side, all these lands belong to the Namgong clan. The patriarch asks if all that isn't enormous, all those lands and those buildings. Hyun, not quite understanding, says yes. It's very big. Suddenly, the man turns and asks what he thinks about it. The former flabby man is completely confused because he's asking and answering all his own questions. Suddenly, he starts to deduce that the man wants him to go there just to test how good his King Gong is. As he prepares to go there, the old man asks if he understood after looking at all these possessions, but the boy continues to prepare for his sprint. When Hyun took the first step, the patriarch said he still didn't understand even after looking at all of this. At that moment, he slammed his head hard on the ground when he finally realized the old man had mentioned possessions in a previous sentence. Raising his head with his face all banged up, he asks if the patriarch could clarify things for him better. Then, with a smirk that seemed quite fake to me, the old man says he was trying to say that a good portion of these possessions could be his. Hyun is completely surprised by this, so the man continues, saying he just needs to marry his granddaughter Hai, who will receive a handsome dowry from this old grandfather here. It was only at this moment, after all the talk, that he understood the old man had brought him here just to say this. And that was exactly it. The old man confirmed his doubt. Now he realized why the Sword King was talking so much nonsense with his father just to recruit him. Still smiling, the old man says he will convince Hai, and he shouldn't worry about it. Finding it all absurd, the boy just jumps off the roof. For the Sword King to be talking about marriage, he must be crazy, Ken thinks. Suddenly, the man comes after him, calling him a rascal and ordering him to wait. Hyun seemed not to care and continued on his way. The old man with a scary face was following him, saying he could give him much more if he wants. It was at this moment that he realized he had reincarnated as a martial arts genius, and that was good, but the Sword King himself was eyeing him, which would ruin his happiness. Out of the blue, the old man stops, shouting that if he marries his granddaughter, most of what the Namgong clan has will be his, but the boy says he won't marry. Indignant, the old man asks why he doesn't want to marry, so the boy questions if he knows he is the only son of the Yu clan. He then rubs it in the old man's face that practically all of Anping's prefecture belongs to the Yu clan, and decides the emperor respects his father greatly and sends many treasures. So why would he marry just for wealth? He even sighs for speaking too much, and concludes by telling his poor uncle that he is the sole heir of the clan, so the old man should forget about this marriage thing. The boy thought he would be taught martial arts, so he was all excited, at which point the old man realized that Hinan was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and doesn't aspire to wealth. However, the old man is the only one who has surpassed all limits and become the Sword King, so he surely has something to bargain with. Some time later, the old man was unleashing several sword strikes stylishly. While the old man did this, the boy just wondered why the old man was making him do this so early in the morning. Namgong finishes by saying that this is the Emperor's sword style and asks if it isn't impressive. However, Kyun could only think that probably when people get old, 
they wake up earlier. Then the old man throws his sword, saying this is the explosive vibrant blade. The sword he threw starts cutting the tree in several different places, which makes the boy wonder if these trees aren't expensive. And so the old man continues showing his techniques for a good while. Now panting, he says these are martial arts that only direct descendants of the Namgong clan can learn. He was about to say that if he marries his granddaughter, he would teach him everything, but Hyun was already leaving. The desperate old man throws himself at him, asking him to pay close attention, that these are techniques that no money in the world can buy, and the boy says he knows that well, but he asserts that everything he showed now was nothing special. Upon hearing this, the old man bursts into laughter, thinking it was a joke. Then he says he forgot that even if Hyun is talented, he wouldn't be able to see the greatness of these techniques since he only recently learned martial arts. He was going to say that martial arts are passed down and improved over generations, when Han simply interrupts him, saying he can easily do that, and the surprised old man tells him to stop this nonsense. So of course Han asks if he should show him then. Taking a branch, he says this would probably be the only way the old man would really leave him alone. Knowing that rumors will spread anyway, he thinks there's no harm in pretending to be a genius once more. So he starts swinging the branch while his uncle tells the boy to stop joking. But suddenly, the boy stows the branch in his imaginary sheath. Focusing just for a moment, he begins his performance in front of his uncle. The old man was immediately perplexed. The boy was indeed using the emperor's sword style, and to make matters worse, he was doing it with great skill using just a branch. The man couldn't believe what he was seeing, so he orders the boy to stop immediately. Furious, he questions what the heck is going on and how the boy learned the emperor's sword style. Without showing any fear, Hyun says he was the one who taught him. Still confused, the old man asks if he really taught him. Hyun says he just demonstrated the skill to him a moment ago. It was at this moment that the old man understood that martial arts genius or talent. None of that comes close to describing how monstrous this boy is. While he thinks the boy only saw it once and already executed it, the boy was calling out to him. Hyun asks if he usually stands there without blinking and drooling frequently. Then throwing his stick away, he says he's decided he won't marry his granddaughter. The old man just says okay as he watches the stick fall. But with fire in his eyes, he says this guy is perfect and will definitely make him marry his granddaughter at all costs. Now in another part of the Namgong clan city, there were some guys walking through the city. There were just three of them walking among the citizens. Suddenly, one of them orders him to split up here and starts remembering what he found out. He gave money to a citizen in exchange for information. The man informed him that a client came two days ago and as soon as he arrived, he gathered people who knew how to move in Huangshan and found out about the Crimson Pebble. The name of this person is Jin Wigang, and so obviously the life of the informant was taken. Then we return to the protagonist's quarters where someone was calling for his uncle in front of him. He unopened the door to greet whoever was calling him. This was his master from his past life, and now his nephew who came to ask why he is not training. Hyun just says he doesn't need to learn the Namgong clan cultivation technique. So angrily the guy orders him to follow him immediately, while Hyun just thinks that in the past his gaze would have paralyzed him with fear but now he seems pretty cute. The boy was furious thinking he doesn't like this situation since it was recently discovered that in addition to being talented he is capable of performing a martial art he saw only once. But he knows that being good only in external martial arts and leaving internal martial arts aside would result in a terrible fighter. And watching his uncle now he can't detect a single thread of internal energy coming from him. So he stops Yen by putting his hand on his shoulder ordering him again to come with him while being kind. Hyun, on the other hand, just thinks this loser is digging his own grave. Turning around with a look of evil, he thinks that finally it's time for him to start training his disciple. So he starts removing the boy's hand from his shoulder, and says he heard that his nephew would teach him, but that he has nothing to learn from him. Instead, it was he who should be teaching his useless nephew. The angry boy shouts that he kept it polite calling him uncle, but even so he dares to be so arrogant. Hyun just questions what kind of face he's making. Thus he planned to hit his uncle to make him follow him. Then he concludes by saying for him to do it if he can calling him nephew which makes the man even more furious. But Han emanating his sinister aura asks what's wrong with calling his nephew nephew. And making a crazy face he mockingly speaks the word nephew again. The furious boy shouts that he is a complete lunatic and that his arrogance knows no bounds. But that may can lose the hype of the fight. His nephew were so angry he shouldn't just be calling him arrogant but insulting him much more. Looking as he is about to explode, it is noticeable that his provocation worked well, but he still did not curse. Hyun says he is talking very casually while the boy calls him arrogant. So our protagonist takes advantage to mock even more, saying that calling him arrogant is the only insult he knows. In his past life, this man used a different curse every day, and so Han thought that when he was young, he cursed all the time. He was invincible in the sword, 
and so he had another nickname, which was the Seven Emotions of the Sword King. All the emotions a human has he transcended through martial arts. He hit him because he felt like shit in the morning. He hit him because he felt good after eating. Thanks to all these emotions, our protagonist has gone through difficult moments. However, none of this makes sense. How can he be so well-mannered now when he reached the extremes of emotions in the other timeline? This could mean that one of the Marim heroes won't exist, and that's something the protagonist can't let happen. Initially, he only wanted to help with martial arts, but now he'll have to help change his personality. He says it's going to be tedious work, but clearly displaying a wicked <laughs> smile on his face. The nephew, calling his uncle a scoundrel, questions what the heck he's talking about. When suddenly Hyun appears in front of him, saying that once he gets beaten up, he'll understand everything. This left the man impressed, questioning if it was the heavenly wind skating he just used. Then positioning himself, he says an imitation has no chance. And he comes at him, saying he'll show the difference between real and fake. And the blows were truly frightening. Even Hyun was impressed as he dodged the strikes. Of course, something like that wouldn't hit him. The man tried to strike again while Hyun jumped in a strange manner. Instinctively, he quickly raised his guard, but he was easily thrown off by a kick. He managed to stop it, but was still thrown several meters. As the boy gasped for air, Hyun asked his nephew if he was just going to keep blocking. Hyun was coming at him again at high speed. The boy, anticipating a punch, tried to block, but the punch didn't make contact. For a moment, the nephew considered dodging using internal energy, but with a malicious smile, Hyun said that wouldn't work. The punch enveloped in a blue aura was already prepared. The boy realized it was too late, so he tried to absorb the punch using internal energy, but soon realized he couldn't defend against it and staggered. Taking advantage of the opening, Hyun moved his fist downward, breaking through his defense completely. Of course, the impact came, and on top of that, using a technique from the Namgong clan. With explosive illumination, he struck the nephew's face very aggressively, and he even laughed at the situation, while the poor boy flew meters and exploded against a wall. Hyun went towards the boy again while he was already weakened. He was completely defeated and coughing up blood. Surprised, thinking he had no internal energy, the boy asked how he knew how to use the explosive illumination. Did he learn that from the time they had contact? If so, he really is a genius sent by the heavens. There was nothing he could do against this monster in front of him. Hyun, on the other hand, said his nephew still has much to learn. The poor guy could only think that he was scared. The sound of blows was heard everywhere. Hyun was pounding on him, saying he had no idea how long he had waited for this. He said as he kicked, delivering several blows to the face without any remorse. Of course, all this was something he suffered at the hands of this man in his past life. He eagerly awaited this day, and now it had arrived, which made him very happy. Now really cursing, the boy could only ask him to stop hitting, that it hurt too much. Then he finally realized and remembered some words from his past life. This emotion the boy was feeling now was anger. Crying as he was beaten, the boy asked him to stop talking nonsense, and then took a super hook to the chin. Noticing his nephew is still very weak, Hyun starts thinking of ways to strengthen the boy, and even considers going after the second mystical creature. Some time later, he was pointing at the boy, saying they now have to train together. The poor guy's nightmare had just begun. Oh, shit! A few days later, still in the Namgong family palace, they were still training hard. For ten full days, they kept at it. And while enduring this infernal training, he finally began to react. While venting, the boy released a sword strike. Hyun realized there was already a good amount of internal energy in this strike. It seems he managed to fuse his anger into the sword in just a few days of training. Hyun finally began to understand that he really needs to be pushed to the limit to improve quickly. At this point, training to fuse anger should be enough. So now the training to extract it will begin. He thinks this as he lands a strike, sending him flying, quickly closing the distance to land another punch. But the nephew's expression suddenly changed. His eyes were full of anger. This was what Shun wanted. So the nephew delivered a super strike with an aura full of anger. Realizing he missed the strike, he panicked. Now that he missed, it was clear he would sleep for about three days with Hen's next blow. But out of nowhere, Hen said they'd stop for today and go somewhere. The nephew just asks where they are going. Then with a scary aura, Hen questions if his nephew is questioning him. Realizing he would get another beating, he quickly gets up saying they must leave right away without knowing where. This boy is starting to get smart lol. Now in another part of Namgong clan city, several people were going about their normal lives when suddenly someone stopped in front of a beggar and threw a coin into the pot. The beggar thanked them while the person asked if they could talk to him as compensation. The truth is, this was one of the warriors informing the beggar that their leader, Jin Wigang, isn't in Namgong clan. The beggar said nothing for a moment, but then raised his face asking if he really isn't there. The disguised man says he really isn't, but strangely someone appeared during the same period. The leader immediately asked who this person was and was told it was Yu Ken. 
the son of Yusun Wan, now staying in Namgong clan. The man asks what they should do, and if they should ask the captain for help. But after thinking for a moment, we see Hkinun and his nephew, who were passing right by them at that moment. The beggar says they shouldn't call the captain, they will check it out themselves. At this moment, one of his henchmen was already following Hkinun and his nephew. The man talking to the beggar gets up saying he's leaving. The beggar thanked again for the coins. But of course, the final order was to proceed with the plans. However, there was someone else watching the situation. It seems these two were looking for the beggar who was making money in their territory without paying taxes. To sum up, they're mad because the beggar is making money in their territory, and now they want to beat him up. Some time later, the nephew complained that the books only had sad stories and lamentable characters. So why should they carry so many books around? Hyun just says he needs to experience grief, but since he was born into a rich family, and no one has ever been sick, this won't happen. Of course, the protagonist was also born with a silver spoon in his mouth so he can't say anything. But now they must read a Beijing opera and laugh like crazy, which confuses the nephew. But some time later, he was all excited after reading that book. Hyun says happiness soothes the heart and prevents sadness and anger from taking over. His nephew's heart must be calmed to have a broader perspective and thus see their enemies more clearly. The nephew just says he'll keep that in mind while asking what they'll do with so many melancholic books. But suddenly we're back to the villains pretending to be beggars. By now they had already identified their targets. The order was to silently follow them and observe only. The leader says he will personally follow Yu Hyun. Everyone must move cautiously and not be discovered until they leave Hefei. Suddenly, someone shouts calling for the beggar. Hyun and his nephew immediately turn to see what's happening. That guy who appeared earlier was asking if the beggar was wandering around without paying any taxes. Because of this, their plan was cancelled instantly. The beggar asks who they are and the guys say the beggar is very cheeky. The guy introduces himself as the leader of Hefei's Jiwa sect called Wang Tol. Showing fear, the beggar begs them not to do this to him, while the Jiwa sect leader orders them to beat the beggar. The beggar, who is actually the leader of the villains, thinks he can't reveal his identity now or the whole plan would go down the drain. Seeing Yu Han right there, he starts to question if he should let them beat him. Seeing all those people beating the beggar, the nephew asks if they shouldn't intervene. But Han says he doesn't understand because he was protected growing up and says the world isn't a fairy tale so they can't get involved. It's normal for there to be fights between the beggar sect and the vagabond sect in the alleys. Those there are now from the Jewa sect and are enemies of the beggar sect. Besides, it's not a fight between martial artists and that's another reason they shouldn't get involved. So they decide to turn back and continue their way while the villains in a telepathic message say they've already left so they'll intervene. But they are ordered to stop as a purple aura emanates from the alley. The leader of the vagabonds doesn't understand what's happening but is soon thrown far away from the beggar. One of the men shouts for the boy. However, at this moment, they are completely surrounded by the villains. Their leader orders no one to interfere. The man, after getting up, orders his gang to grab the beggar. But no one can move properly with such a powerful aura emanating. The beggar approaches his attacker and asks if he has any idea what he just did. This was a unique chance for them that may never come again, and they cannot afford failures in their plan. So this boy from the Vagabond clan will now have to take responsibility. Grabbing the boy by the head, he did what you guys think he did. Afterwards, he says there's a river nearby and orders his men to get rid of the rest and leave no traces. Of course, everyone immediately follows the order. And so, several members of the Vagabond clan disappeared that night just for beating up a simple beggar. Not far away, someone was hidden in the bushes. This was someone sent by Wang who just witnessed that these guys are not just vagabonds and that beggar doesn't belong to the beggar sect. Running while crying, he says he needs to inform the beggar sect about this. Now at the Namgong Pavilion, the family patriarch was furious, questioning why she hasn't come. It seems he asked his granddaughter to come marry and she refused simply because she doesn't want to marry. Moreover, she has already left for the battlefield to fight against the unorthodox sex and she made sure to send this letter only after she had already left. The Namgong Patriarch becomes increasingly angry about this. Exploding in rage, he asks what kind of upbringing these young people are having. Realizing there's nothing to be done, if she doesn't want to return, they should just send Hyun to where she is. So he happily goes off scene to find our protagonist, when suddenly he hears someone swearing loudly. Immediately, he thought there were intruders inside the residence, so he quickly jumped over the wall to check the situation. But looking down, he was surprised by what he saw. Hyun was swinging swords at his nephew while the latter kept swearing out of nowhere. Will the old man be furious about this? The young master prepares an attack while he is crying, but suddenly a golden aura begins to emanate from his sword. Seeing this, the old man thinks that this energy looks like a controlled flame, while the protagonist notices his presence. But before the attack can hit him, he orders to stop, immediately halting the young man's strike. Who soon gets angry, saying that this time he would be able to hit his head. 
Hearing Sung swearing, the old man seems impressed, while the protagonist questions what he is doing there. Descending from the roof of the house, he says he is fascinated by this special training, and soon the protagonist says he can watch it then. Making the old man wonder if this really is his house. He asks if our hero is teaching Sung swordsmanship, but he denies it, saying they are just training. Making the young patriarch wonder why he is lying. The old man, however, says he used a technique different from the clan's techniques, being answered that he developed it on his own. Scaring the young man who asks what his uncle is talking about. He then explains that this is the Sword of Seven Emotions, and that the young master had the idea of creating a technique based on someone's emotions. Analyzing this, the old man seems curious about the technique, and soon understands that the clan, which has always been based on speed techniques and variations, is now facing a new generation and going through changes. The protagonist questions why he is there, while the old man responds that he needs our hero to go to the Morum Alliance. But before he can explain the reason, a man interrupts their conversation, explaining that someone from the Hifi Beggars sect has just arrived, but it seems that something terrible has happened to them. The old man tells the protagonist that they will talk next time while Sung thinks he needs to take a look. Being left alone behind, he wonders how those two can be so alike and since there is nothing to do, maybe he can take a look. While walking through the city, some people observe him. Secretly, someone asks the leader what to do. The man who looks like a beggar thinks they don't know when they will have another chance like this, so he orders everyone to go after him. The subordinates confirm the idea, and when he enters a place with fewer people around, then that moment will be used to capture him. The city seems quite busy, while the protagonist thinks it is good to be able to look around calmly, since he had difficult moments because the people of Amping recognized him. But the memories of those smiling people giving him gifts surely make him miss those moments, so the former fatty wonders if everyone is okay. And that to return to Amping's prefecture and maintain peace in these times, he will need to intervene before chaos begins. But suddenly, he notices a somewhat familiar person passing by. However, he thinks he must have seen him on the streets at some point, so he decides to let it go. But at that moment, he notices suspicious activity, and while concentrating as much as possible while eating his dumpling, he notices that a man is watching him from afar, then time passes and the protagonist continues walking through the city, while that same man keeps following him. Soon he passes in front of an old man, realizing that this was the vagabond who was beaten up yesterday, and getting irritated since he probably thought our former fatty wouldn't recognize him just because he is wearing common clothes, remembering the servant's words that something terrible happened in the beggar's sect. Our hero imagines that it is probably their fault, so he calls the attention of a guy who is reading a medieval manhwa, and in a friendly tone, questioning what the man is doing there. But this unusual action makes his pursuers scared, while the man receives a blow to his private parts, and Sue, the protagonist, takes the opportunity to escape. To prevent him from escaping, the men soon start chasing him. But when they go to the alley the protagonist entered, he is no longer there. The long-haired man, who looks like an old woman, wonders if he really went that way. But soon our hero, who is on top of a house, asks who they are, and then he was curious to see so many men running after him, then imagines that these guys must be cutting to that side. The old man seems irritated, looking at him, while the protagonist descends from the house, and in a threatening tone, asks why they are chasing him like rats, then questions if these men are the same ones who were chasing him last night. And analyzing their expressions, he is probably right. He wonders if they are what is left of the Nine Dragons Fortress or maybe they are after the Virgin Ginseng. The old man tells his subordinates that killing him will be easy. However, the young man is the son of a former government employee, and things could get complicated if they get involved with the government. So the old man asks if he is Jin Wigang who took the Virgin Ginseng. But our hero feigns ignorance and asks who that guy is making the old man with narrow eyes wonder if they got confused, since if he had really consumed the virgin ginseng, he would at least be at the energy condensation stage or above, but he feels nothing coming from him. While our ex-bowling ball, who received incredible lessons from a beggar on how to act and beg for money on the street, knows he won't be discovered, but realizes that if they came all the way here just to get the virgin ginseng, it means they are definitely linked to the servants of chaos. So there's no need to waste time planning to capture them and find out as much information as possible. The old man with narrow eyes apologizes for the misunderstanding, while the protagonist says he can't just leave like that, since he is curious to know who the hell they are. The old man who said he was going to flee seems to have lied since he orders his subordinates to attack the extra skin. And soon the senior union advances. Seeing those guys advancing without using any lethal skills, just makes the protagonist want to hit them even more. So with one strike each, he knocks down two, throwing them against a nearby wall. He then tells the old man that he must have seemed very weak since they didn't even use skills to advance. While the narrow-eyed man is nervous since a person without internal energy did this, as he is already done with these two, he then questions the old man if he is going to try to flee or not, but this only fuels his fury. Our deflated Baloo knows he is at a disadvantage since their numbers are much greater, so he starts his act by asking if they want to play, capturing one of the men he knocked down, and getting the hell out of that situation. 
The long-haired old man runs after him, and takes advantage of being behind him to deliver a cowardly attack. But easily and just lowering his head, the protagonist manages to dodge, and soon looks in all directions, finding a place that should serve his plan. He then starts to contract his muscles, and throws the man he had captured to the top of the building, making him break the roof and fall inside the structure, also making other people flee because the building is collapsing. Soon the protagonist jumps meters high while preparing a kick, and with just one attack causes such destruction that it evaporates the building. The senior union starts to approach the location, while the protagonist questions if they have already arrived and that they are faster than he expected. However, while placing his hand on his face, he questions if the old men already knew. And soon the old man gets scared since the bastard in front of him is someone he knows very well. Now with a changed appearance, the protagonist says that he is knave since he followed him to the center of Hefe. The ex fatty even asks if they want to play a little more, but now they will have to deal with him and the other two clans in the city. Now that he knows the protagonist's plan, the man says that he's a pretty clever bastard, and knows it will be difficult to deal with two clans at the same time, so they need to hurry and leave Hefe. However, to do this, he first orders all the senior men to go after the protagonist who thinks that their plan is to eliminate him to silence him. Soon he prepares a kick, destroying several rocks around him and throwing them into the air, then asks if the men really thought he wouldn't have any tricks up his sleeve, soon grabbing some stones that are in the air, while thinking they should have fled when they had the chance, and using the technique of 12 consecutive cuts to hit all his enemies. But at that moment, the man takes the opportunity to attack him from behind, while being praised by our toothpick for following him well. But he couldn't be called a martial artist if it were that easy to catch him from behind. While being strangled, the man swallows a pill, making the protagonist find it strange that he is no longer alive. But soon he realizes the real intention of the old men. And when he looks to see where that old man is, unfortunately, it's too late. Since he managed to eliminate his captured teammate, our hero then hears a commotion. And when he looks, he sees the other members eliminating their companions. While he realizes they are sacrificing their subordinates to leave no traces of what happened, the old man shouts, ordering them to retreat. The three old bandits then start to flee, while our ex-skinny says that if that's how they want to play, then he won't hold back anymore, quickly chasing after them. Through the city, the chase continues, while one of them realizes he won't be able to escape from our hero, quickly deciding to stay behind and face him. But our warrior, with just one movement, dodges his sword strike, and finishes the man with just one attack, thinking he doesn't care if they live or not. The old man passes information to his subordinate who agrees, and then each one goes in a different direction at the curve, making the protagonist think it will be problematic if he ends up losing one of them. But suddenly, the old man looks up and is startled by what he sees, as some men are ordering them to stop running. Soon we realize they are members of the two clans that protect the city. Our hero thinks they are slow, but at least they arrive, so he can continue chasing that guy. Quickly, the old man runs through the city, while our ex-skinny continues to chase him fiercely, realizing that if he gets caught now, it would create a huge problem in his plans, he takes out a suspicious little ball while thinking he can't give up, immediately turning and throwing it towards our protagonist. But when he looks, he is no longer there. And that little ball starts heading towards nothing, immediately exploding shortly after creating some distance. Suddenly, our hero appears, calling the old man's attention and punching him in the face, which is so strong it throws him far away, and makes him stop at the brick wall in front of him. While cracking his fingers, the ex-fatty tells him to give up since his subordinates have already been caught. Defeated, the man asks who the hell he is and why he hid his abilities when he was in the U-Clan. But our hero, being the winner of the duel, will be the first to ask questions, asking where that old man with narrow eyes is from. And realizing he doesn't want to answer, says that since it's just the two of them there, they have plenty of time to learn more about each other. While getting up with difficulty, the old man thinks he has given up many things for his plan, even sacrificing his companions and himself. But before he sacrifices himself, he must first eliminate this bastard. Hyun, looking at that expression, our protagonist knows it's exactly the one of someone making a last, desperate attempt before dying. But hearing this only irritates the old man who asks if he thinks all this is a joke. Looking around, our young hero realizes that none of the sex are nearby. And in that case, decides to eliminate the old man with just one blow. Not understanding what the young man meant by just one blow, the old man prepares himself, deciding to finish him to stop hearing this kind of nonsense. He judges that the protagonist will run to reduce the distance and attack him, but he will take advantage of this moment to make a clean cut and win the duel. But our protagonist, while concentrating, remembers a perfect martial art to show the difference between two people. With a quiet stance, he presses the ground to vibrate a little, thus increasing his strength by pressing the ground as he can support the weight of the heavens. Soon a dense and thick aura starts to rise from his feet, going up to his torso, and finally reaching his fist, making a colossal attack hit the old man without the protagonist needing to move from where he is. Confused, he receives the crushing blow. While our young hero looks at him with confidence, the old man from the senior union is soon thrown against the wall again. And as soon as he crashes, a gigantic explosion is caused, 
While our ex-dead skin asks if that blow was good and explains that this is Shaolin's supreme technique, the 30-meter mystic fist, and that they told him if he could learn it, he could deliver thousands of punches. Observing the old man on the ground, he wonders what he should do with him since he can't interrogate him there. But to his salvation, a man presenting himself as the leader of the beggar's clan appears, asking to take care of the man. The hero simply accepts while they approach the unconscious old man. The two beggars start examining his body, and turn to their leader, saying it is exactly as Beyond described. The old man from the beggar's sect asks our warrior to leave him with the sect, making our protagonist confused and wondering what that sneaky little thief is talking about. Suddenly, we see someone running while calling for his uncle. This someone is the young master who asked the protagonist what happened to his clothes, which we see are completely drenched and dirty. The boy who turned into a loyal dog in 10 days quickly gets furious wanting to know who did this, but he gets a slap from our hero, telling him to be quiet. Confused, the young man questions why he was hit, while the protagonist prepares another attack, irritated that he is trying to dodge. The old man from the beggar's clan looks at the man on the ground and thinks that this person was definitely not weak, since his companions were at the level of manifested or even projected energy. But that young man managed to defeat all these masters alone. The old man then apologizes as he seemed impolite, and the protagonist says that the beggar's sect seems to have already been looking for this man. He explains that the Gyuwa sect, which is related to the beggar's sect, was wiped off the map and the fault is of these people. Then he asks what our hero's relationship is with them, making the young flabby one realize that the old man is trying to get information from him. So he responds that the thieves seemed to be after someone but mistook him for that person. Remembering his arduous training, getting beaten, our protagonist indefinitely won't let himself be fooled by this man. Even so, the bearded man still seems suspicious that the young man is hiding something. Yet he thinks it is a good thing they are showing up there. Even if it takes him back to the Nambone clan to unearth information, our hero can't do much since he doesn't have enough power. These guys are also those who hide and move in secret, so they don't know what they would do if they realized that the pursuit squad was eliminated. Since if that happened, the entire Yu clan could be exterminated, so he needs to divert their attention elsewhere. And these guys are perfect for that, to serve as a distraction since they are obsessed with unearthing secrets. As soon as they start, this will buy time and all our hero needs to do is steer him in the direction he wants. The protagonist pretends to remember the group's name, greatly exciting the bearded man who already wants him to hand them over. But our ex-balloon says it won't happen since he almost died in that fight and doesn't know if he can trust the leader of the beggars. Then he looks at his disciple asking for help with a glance. But seeing that threatening face, the young man just wonders what he did wrong. He then starts to concentrate and think of a plan since he learned imperial studies in arithmetic. So he approaches, telling the beggar to stop and saying that he is putting his uncle in a difficult situation. But this only irritates the protagonist since he just ruined his entire plan. Even so, the beggar apologizes and says that this concerns the pride of the sect, so he wants to capture the man. And before his disciple says anything, the protagonist accepts the old man's request, since there is nothing else to do. However, he must leave out any details involving him. And if they discover anything, they will have to pass on the information. The bearded man then ensures that the information will be passed on, while the protagonist says goodbye with a malicious smile being watched by the beggars. The long-haired man feels like he was tricked since he didn't even pay the information fee. But his leader reprimands him, asking if he didn't hear about the ruin of the heavens and that it probably means they want to ruin the heavens. This means they are plotting to overthrow the Murum world. And if they can interrogate this guy and find out about their plans, it will definitely be enough to become the elder of the main sect. So he orders to take the man and follow him to the sect. A few hours pass and it is already night. The protagonist thinks that originally the servant should obtain clues about the second mystical creature, but the story has changed. More importantly, from now on he will have to be much more careful. Since they weren't able to obtain the virgin ginseng, he is sure they will move faster towards the second mystical creature. So now he needs to be more careful and quick to prevent chaos from happening. In the sex buildings, a loud shout is heard. We realize is the old man asking the protagonist if he really wants to go to the Orthodox Marim Alliance, asking if he is really serious. But the protagonist says yes since he wants to gain more experience, making the old man quickly agree with him while wishing him to make friends with Rai. Besides that, the extra skin wishes for Sung to go with him, making the young master completely shocked to hear that. However, the old man says it's a bit difficult since he is the young patriarch, making the protagonist understand the situation. Being the young patriarch means he has an important role and can't leave so easily. For that reason, you will say his goodbyes and pack his things. Young starts heading to the exit when he remembers hearing that besides Rai, there are five other phoenixes, and that all of them are exceptionally beautiful, so he is eager to meet them. Upon hearing this, the old man is completely shocked to realize what he is talking about, while the protagonist continues saying he might end up meeting one and getting married since spring is the perfect season for love, and it's coming soon. Then the old man shouts that they must call a clan meeting right away, while he leaves hopping, realizing his plan worked. Sometime later, we move to the Yanks River and see a large vessel. 
There, a man orders his subordinates to check the boat carefully, while the bald head approaches, taking an envelope from his clothes. He then goes to the man, handing over the envelope, and saying this is the symbol of his sincerity. So the man orders his subordinates to just take a quick look, and then leave to have breakfast. The three men then leave while the bald head stays there, telling them to take care as they leave, while thinking that these government idiots are weak when it comes to money. Then he goes to the deeper parts of his vessel, and calls for someone, explaining that he told the crew not to go down to the storage cabin so he can rest. The man who was hiding says he will pay the rest when they reach the destination, thanking the man. The bald head then goes back up looking relieved, saying they just have to pass through the black whale fortress, and that they shouldn't have any problems as long as they pay the toll fee. Suddenly, he sees our protagonist and the young patriarch boarding the vessel. A few hours later, the sails are hoisted and the boat is finally on its way to its destination. While Sung tells the protagonist not to try anything against the pirates, as it could cause great losses in the process. Hearing that the protagonist still wishes to fight them, the young man explains that this will cause a much bigger problem than he imagines. Since if a fight starts, all the pirates from the fortress might show up. Moreover, they have a high-level monster comparable to his grandfather. His name is Sea Dragon Kin Rusejin, known as the Monster of the Sea. And while hitting the table, he says that's not all. If our protagonist recklessly loses control and causes a war, the losses will be enormous, so he tells him to just stay quiet. Our hero, who heard all that in silence, just looks at his disciple, then punches him in the head. And while the young man complains that this habit of using fists for everything is terrible, he keeps thinking about this sea dragon emperor, and that apparently, he has no choice but to stay quiet this time. A few hours later, the boat is already in the open sea, while the birds migrate to warmer regions. A man at the tip of the ship is observing something, until he sees a strange object coming from a distance, and soon points out, saying it's the Black Whale Fortress ship. A ship with black flags approaches them, leaving the entire crew of the boat in shock. They finally dock, and an extremely fat pirate gets out and goes to our protagonist's ship. He is greeted by the bald head, saying it's been a while since he's seen the vice leader Gold Diak, immediately ordering his subordinate to get the toll fee, and being praised by the pirate who says he does everything without needing to spell it out. Observing this, Sung thinks the deal seems to be going well, but finds it strange that the pirates haven't left yet. The fat man says that even though they took the money, there is still another matter to take care of since he received the order to look for someone on the vessel. Then he turns to the bald head, questioning if there is anyone else hiding there, and that he knows very well he lets criminals board from time to time. It would be good if he handed over this person since then, there would be no need to bother the other passengers. The captain loves money but thinks he needs to survive above all else, so he decides to reveal that there is someone in the storage cabin. The fat man then shouts that he is looking for a person who is on the run after committing a crime and that everyone must cooperate by forming a line. But the people on the vessel are so scared that they just look at him, trembling with fear. While one of the pirates observes the protagonist who is calmly looking at the sea. He gets irritated by this presumptuous attitude and quickly slaps our young man on the head, asking if he didn't hear that the boss had ordered them to stand in line. Sung just looks, pleading with the protagonist not to do anything reckless. But he is already glaring at the man with intense anger. Suddenly, a scream can be heard from the storage hold, making everyone look in that direction. Even the pirate seems confused as he hears footsteps, and the man who was hiding there presents himself, showing his beautiful black and elegant robes. The fat man questions how he dares to mess with his men, while the long-haired man says he finds it hard to hide from the beggar's sect, but to think they would trust mere pirates to capture him. Hearing these words, the fat man gets angry, drawing his sword and saying he will detach the man's head, delivering an extremely fast attack that hits a pillar. Observing that, the protagonist thinks the pirate isn't bad at all, but wonders why that guy is jumping around like that. The crew members below start to see the pillar that was hit falling, becoming extremely frightened by their imminent end. But before they are hit, someone cuts in half. That someone is the protagonist who is irritated and realizing they have finally shown their true faces. Guys, the video is over. I just wanted to ask for your attention real quick. For those who aren't subscribed, please subscribe and leave a like. It helps a lot. 87% of the audience isn't subscribed, so if you want to help, please subscribe.